She's not the one for you. I'm sure she kept that clue up. Huh? That brand new car. That she was not the issues. She wanted to help all her stuff to stay calm. Now she wants to help her all. You want the real deal? Mm-hmm. Real deal. Hey guys, make sure you're uh, you're muted so we don't get any uh, feedback. I hear y'all cartoons in the background. <laughs> If anybody has a question they want to ask before we get started in a couple minutes, feel free to shoot it out. I'm going over uh, I'm going over a run game and pass protection. Man, that's a weird delay. I'm like five seconds behind myself. Unless that's coming through on you guys and whoever's unmuted. Could be that. We'll work through it. Hello. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing? I'm you Coach Talib. Talib. Definitely uh, appreciate this seminar. Absolutely. How long have you been running this offense? Uh, about five years. Um, I played in a in like a power eye, fullback, tight end situation. So the wide okay. splits were up. Uh, Whoever that is, I got to find out who this is, because this is like a crazy delay. Hey, 
Everybody just make sure you mute it real quick because I'm I'm getting a bunch of feedback of myself from the past. <laughs> All right, guys, well, let's get the party started. Uh, so I'm Coach Vincent Grigsby. I live in L.A. Been uh, coaching with the wide splits or running wide splits for uh, about five years now. Um, that's across the JUCO and the uh, high school level. So uh, let's go ahead, get it started. So this is a uh, – I'm going to mute my mic, my uh, speakers, because – um, you guys just talk to me through the chat because I <laughs> I can't hear myself with that kind of delay. Anyway, um, this was our first year running wide splits. This is my first year at Warren High um, and a uh, new head coach. And this is what we did. Um, it wasn't always pretty, don't get me wrong, but first year out the gate with guys who are not used to playing at that kind of distance, um, I was pretty uh, pretty excited for what they what they produced. Um, we had a great, great quarterback. We had a great running back. He got hurt, um, week three. So we had to, uh, this is done with backups and a, and a round robin situation happening on the, uh, from the running back position. Um, so for us to get 6.7 yards of carry, 1600 yards, only give up 22 sacks. That's, that's still, I'm an old line coach at heart. So that's still a little too much for me. Um, but, uh, as you guys will find out, Offensive linemen with a uh, poor technique, they um they get exposed fairly easily. Um, so five years, this is what my averages are: 167 yards per game. Um, that's across the the JUCO and high school level, 94% pocket efficiency. Um, so fairly decent situation when it comes to uh exposing guys to this type of system. Um. This is why I run wide splits, uh, well, I guess pros, I guess. So creating running lanes by alignment, you force the box defenders to play distance. You know, you take guys who are used to playing two, three yards away from each other. Now you're taking them out to being five plus yards away from each other. You know, that's uh, that's going to give them some uh, something to practice that week, definitely. And it gives the QB clear lanes to see downfield. Um, not that that was, at least in my opinion, too big of a problem before um but i mean it always helps when you have a smaller quarterback and the line is four four feet apart so they can just see right down the middle without uh having to roll out or anything like that so the cons of course you open up the splits you open up the blitzing lanes so just keep that in mind poor o-line technique gets easily exposed by a good d lineman you got to make sure you have a good offensive line coach um you know, the, 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 I've seen teams try to run it, and they just don't have the right kind of technique. They're just going out there kind of smashing guys. They're not really adjusting to any type of blitz looks or any kind of slants or anything like, anything like that. They're simply running wide splits for the sake of the look. And uh, that's, uh, that's where they fail. You can't, you can't do that because you're trying to be a, a new school lead type of team, and you decide to just uh, – just, widen out your O-line for no apparent reason, no schematic reason at least. 
um, and tougher combo blocks. So we still have our, our opportunities where we can we can double guys, um, but it's not the traditional scoop block scenario. It's um it's very different where one guy's getting vertical push and then the, the second guy in the combo is pushing it lateral and we'll uh we'll get a chance to look at that in a minute. Um so we're gonna start off with some run game. So given our splits, our inside zone and outside zone looks. Those are all basically one-on-one -on -one blocks. Just you're leaving the line of scrimmage at a different angle. Um, power lock, that's just one-on-ones across the board with a puller. And we'll, uh, I'll explain that in detail moving forward. Um, combo blocking scheme, we still have our, our powers and counters. So I know a, a common uh, misconception is that, oh, um, you know, why splits? You can't really run counter. You can't run power. You're just throwing the ball 80 times a game. And I was once that guy, like when I started coaching in uh, 2015 was my first year at uh, Santa Monica College. And I first meeting with the offensive coordinator, he's like, I thought he was showing me film and I thought he was showing me like some kind of special package. <laughs> I was like, coach, why are you split so big? He was like, oh, our splits stay that way. And I was like, huh, maybe I'm in the wrong meeting, but it ends up uh, <laughs> panning out well for us because we we went undefeated and, and uh, we're our uh, American division champs that year. So. Um, you can still do all of your stuff. You still have your one-offs, your trap. I love trap with wide splits. It's kind of it's kind of unfair with wide splits trapping a three tech. So um, I feel sorry for that guy when it's done right. And then our various other uh, pin and pulls. Um, let's see. I see somebody in the chat. Splits of four feet. How exactly wide are your splits? Four feet. All right. That's what we preach during the. Uh, in practice, but in the game, they're going to fluctuate as guys get tired, as guys start thinking a little lazily. So you would never, we preach four, but we never get less than three, three and a half, because they'll just feel that they're too close. Um, let's see, pass protection. So well, before I go into pass protection, let me show you guys some, some run game stuff. Let me get out of this uh, window. So let's go to the playbook. And OK, so this is how we will block zone. So the center, we call this as one. The guards block the twos, and the tackles block the threes. Um, some people call the, the center's block a zero. You know, it all depends on what you're trying to do. It doesn't really matter what you call them, as long as you guys understand what you're trying to say. So these are these are all leverage blocks, meaning that we're keeping the D line where they are. So this right guard, he's aiming for the near shoulder of this D tackle, engaging and running his feet. Uh, I see the the chat light up. I'll answer your question in a, in a quick second. This left guard, he's attacking his uh this near shoulder, the uh, D tackle's near shoulder, running his feet. So we want to run this. We have a couple options, honestly, with the uh, running. We don't. We don't see the. Uh, Agnes, just get it and go. All right, following these blocks because he's going to have an angle right here, in between the center and the uh, the left guard. Or this is going to be a nice wall for him to bang backwards against. We don't see the film, coach. All right, and we're still reading the DN, and we throw a bubble in there just for uh, all the skill guys out there. Coach, we don't <laughs> so see the screen. We got the pass protection. Uh. True. Let's see. We don't see film. We yeah. still see the pass protection slot. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let me stop screen sharing for a minute. All right. And let me go here. And let me go back to the zone. back and where are we at bam all right you guys good to go can we see this all right so so what we're doing Center is blocking the one right here. This is against a four two five. You know, if you want to see it against a three three, I can draw that up real quick. 
um, or three, four, or anything really. So center is blocking the linebacker. So his one is declared by the first guy to the play side. Could be a D tackle, could be a linebacker, whoever's in that first play side gap. So this is like zone left. Um, right guard's blocking the two. So this will be the right guard's two right here. Right tackle's three right here. Left guard's two, left tackle's three. Um, so like I was saying, we can either bang this by following our blocks. You know, the center has a relatively free release going up to the backer. So the running back can see that and just bang it. Or he could put his foot in the ground and bang it right behind the right guard's block following the uh, right tackle going upfield. Um, so mind you, our splits are four feet. So there's a lot of a lot of space. I'll show you guys some cut-ups in a minute about uh, how you guys can see how, you know, back in the day, they would say, hey, you got to get skinny. It's, it's not really about that life <laughs> when you got wide splits. It's you just you just banging it. All right. Um, let me see. Let me check the chat real quick. Okay, okay. So let me show you guys. Let me stop the share again. And let's go to the other screen I have up. Oh, I know what I gotta do. Here we go. Well, so I'm still on uh I used to coach at El Camino and I'm still on their huddle. And we made some cut ups a while ago. Our offensive coordinator also is the offensive coordinator at uh, at Narbonne. I don't know how many of you guys have heard of that. I mean, Narbonne has been a powerhouse for a couple of years and they recently kind of fell to pieces. So uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's still at El Camino and he's uh, gonna double duty at another high school. Um, so we're gonna see some read cut ups. That's what we call an inside zone. And so right here, uh, some of these don't have an end zone view, so uh, just bear with me. So right here, this is um, this is zone right. All right, you see how the O line is just going to their gaps or going to their man, declaring it. So you guys see how the D line is kind of eagle down. We call that eagle down to three text. So that doesn't matter. Basically, they basically just took away their read, even though this guy right here, he's playing it. But still, you're just going to your gap. So you're blocking your gap. Let's go to another one. Now, these are these are nice and pretty. You know, the cut-ups are always the best of the best. I'll show you guys just some raw film from from our games last year at Warren, just so you guys can see what it might look like in the first year install. So you guys see the right guard comes down here and just clocks the crap out of this D tackle. And there's nobody left linebacker wise to make a play. So that's the only disadvantage I'll say, if there's any uh, defensive guys on here listening, <laughs> trying to get a leg up. Um, having guys at the line of scrimmage like this, they got to make sure they do what they got to do. Simple as that. I mean, and that's against any offensive scheme. If you get, if you're able to, if we're able to neutralize you and you don't have any help at the second level, it's going to be a, a, a dangerous situation. So everybody just locks on. They got to run their feet. You know, a lot of first year offensive linemen, they just get there and they stop their feet. All right. But for any block, really, not just for a, a wide split based offense, you got to engage your guy and run your feet. So here's the end zone view of that. So you guys see by alignment, we're already, running back already has options just by alignment. All right, we don't have to wait for a hole to open up or anything like that. Everything is open simply by alignment. Um, so it's all a matter of offensive line wise, keeping your leverage. So keeping guys where they are, or driving them against their will to where they want to go, which is what the left tackle does here. I don't know how that, this guy gets reached like that. That's, that shouldn't happen. In reality, <laughs> what should have happened? This left tackle will be driving this guy this way, 
I know it'll end up he'll be getting buried and the, and the running back might have to cut back against the grain. But, I mean, this worked out. If for some reason the D-tackle wants to stop and loop around, by all means. All right. So you guys a couple more. So it's all a matter of guys getting to where they need to go. See how the splits widen out the defense. You know, when I first started coaching wide splits, I was like, man, guys can just line up in the gaps and they could just have field day in the backyard, in the, in the backfield. Like there's no, there's no check against it, but there we have our checks. So say guys were walked up in the gaps. It's just a matter of stepping, you either stepping flatter because you got a, a hot blister coming or you're stepping at your regular 45. So it's just all a, ma all a matter of uh, what we see from the defensive front. Oh, this is actually a pull by the quarterback. Let's go to the next one. So this is the end zone view. So by alignment, if we're going zone left right here, this D tackle will be the center's one. Number nine is 77 is two, 54. Or oh, this D tackle is 54 is three. And then on the backside, 53 will call 16 his two, and 75 will call number six his three. So this is against a 3-3. A so our rules slightly change against a 3-3. Basically, uh, we call it a gap. So the right tackle and right guard, let me see, what are we, uh, we like they're going zone, zone right. Let me just let, me let this play for a minute. No, they're going zone left. So the right tackle is the only guy with a clearly defined guy to go to. That's the stack linebacker back here because we're still reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. All right. So now the right guard and center are gapping with the nose to the nose and the, the Mike linebacker and gap. That basically means we're going to step into our gap. They're going to let the nose guard declare which a gap he's going to. And then that will determine where, who climbs up to the Mike linebacker. If the nose blows up the center, then the right guard automatically knows he's climbing up to the second level. Same thing is happening with the left guard and left tackle. They're going to step to their gap. So everybody's stepping left. Whoever's in your gap, that's who you block. So say, looks like this might be number 99. Say he slants into this B gap. Right guard picks that up. Right tackle proceeds up to the second level. And it'll be the same thing if it was flipped around. So based on the fact that we don't have a, the guys aren't giving us any leverage. The down linemen are head up. You know, so say, for example, Say the center calls the nose guard his one, all right? He calls that his one, but now the Mike linebacker wants to flow over the top right here. That puts the right guard in the hell of a situation. He now has to cross over the center's block, which isn't going to happen. <laughs> He's going to cross over the center to pick up a, a Mike linebacker coming downhill to make a tackle, all right? Because the left guard and left tackle, they're leaving, all right? They're worried about their two guys. So that's why we have to gap it. And this is a, that was a great job by the center right guard. That was perfect. Are there any uh, questions about inside zone rules before I uh, proceed to, to outside zone? Feel free to type them into the, to the chat. All right, don't see any questions. I'm trying to get my chat box to pop up, I don't see it.
All right, we're going to move on to to outside zone. So let me get back. Let me stop the share. Coach, can you draw it against a 4 4? Trying to get back over to my, my playbook. So we're going Oz here. So when we go Oz, all right, again, this is against a, a four two five. When we have a play side three tech, the center is gonna pull, all right? So the center is pulling for this Mike linebacker. All right, let me, here we go. So the center is pulling for this Mike linebacker, assuming he's gonna flow over the top to try to make a tackle. The center has to read where First of all, he's reading over the left guard's block, and he's also reading to see if the if the left tackle is getting a good reach on this DN, or if he's ended up having to kick out this DN. Because if he's turning this into more of a kick out, then the center is going to have to bang it, and the running back is going to have to bang it right behind him through the B gap. All right, um, our step is a flatter, kind of not quite 90 degrees, more like a uh, like a 60. All right. Or like a 60, they could J-step if they want to, to get the good, uh, get the leverage. Um, my guys are already aligned on the hills of the center. So we don't really need to get too much deeper, but I, I leave it up to them because through the course of the game, they know how, uh, how guys react and how guys are playing. So I give them that freedom. Um, the backside blocks are very important because with the center vacating right here, this D-tackle, can just scream through and make a play if this right guard is slow. Um, the right tackle, he's going to be chasing us. So he's got to take an angle. His departure angle has to be relatively flat, almost to the to the hip of the D tackle to catch this linebacker's flow. All right. Um, running back, we're just getting the ball. In this scenario, he's following the center. But there have been many a time where the center would go, running back sees daylight, and he just plants it and goes upfield because we end up getting a good reach on this D tackle and this linebacker overflows and there's a nice seam right here in the middle. So it's always nice plays like this. You got to make sure your guy has proper uh, uh, vision. Vision is very important. All right. I didn't value vision too much, but now I do. <laughs> We're going Oz right against the same alignment. All right. Now everybody in, the center still calling his one, guard still calling two, still calling threes, tackle still calling threes. Um, in reality, we teach the quarterback to read this, but this is almost an auto give every single time. Um, just because I don't know any particular reason why, honestly, but uh, I rarely see this outside zone getting pulled by the quarterback unless he just wants to be, be greedy, <laughs> which is fine as long as he makes a play. So the right guard right here, his angle, similar to the backside, uh, right tackle on the other play, his departure angle has to be flat. All right, still flat, hips to the DN because we, we're catching flow. We got fat guys going against against agile, quick linebackers. So you got to make sure that you leave at the right angle so everything can naturally line up with your uh, your ability as a as an offensive lineman. Left guard right here coming flat. We're just trying to catch flow. So the same thing happens right here where if the right tackle doesn't get a good reach on this, if we're not in control of the outside shoulder or outside half of the, uh, the DN, then the running back is going to end up banging this right up field. All right, so you got to be able to read that. If we get a good reach, everything's nice and pretty. It works how it's drawn up on the board. All right, so now let me uh, show you guys some, some video. 
go back to my El Camino page. You can also do odds out of two back. It's very, uh, where the O's go? Should we go? Don't know what play this is. Total takes too much money for all of this to be happening like this. Here we go. All right, here we go. So, let me maximize the screen. So here we go, outside zone, we're going Oz right, right here. So you guys see how the running back had to bang it. The offensive line is just kind of hanging on their guys. There's no real drive happening. So this is against a 3-3. All right, so we're still gapping right here. So now the gap is between the center and the left guard. They're gapping the nose to the mic. The left tackle is going straight up here to the uh, the stack backer. The right guard and right tackle, what they should have done has accounted for these two guys right here. But as you guys see, the right guard, he hesitates and just clogs up everything. It ends up working out, but that's not what he's supposed to do. Right tackle does a decent job. All right, but just look at look at how everything kind of just opens up. Running back sees it, hit the gap. So we're already presented with four plus feet. And now after the movement of the play, we get, I don't know, six, seven, eight feet. So it's another time where it has to get banged up. Running back sees it. So you see one of the advantages of outside zone is we get the flow, the, the defense flows. All right, actually nobody flows on this one. This linebacker kind of stays where he's supposed to be. Makes it easy. But in a perfect world, <laughs> the linebackers will be flowing and present the cutback lane to the running back. But right here, there's just too much space to ignore. All right. I think this is uh this is out of two back. Follow your blocker. This is a very good job getting the edge by the uh by the tackle. He could have done a better job running his feet, but at the same time, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. I don't like how the right guard slows down. He slows down too much. He should have went up and occupied that guy. Um, but for the sake of the play. And for the sake of the, uh, of a play getting called and, and working, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't get any better than that. Here's the end zone view. a couple more here actually let me try to find my i'm sorry guys my my chat box like disappeared and i don't want to pass up any questions you guys might have so let me try to find that real quick
on, so it's popping up behind all my stuff. All right, so uh, let me answer some questions real quick because uh, the chat box is popping up behind my my video. So I'll draw it up against a four four. Uh, the cons to these wide splits, I'll go back to that slide in a minute. But um, in short, you're opening up blitz lanes. Um, your O line has to be well coached. They have to understand how to use their leverage, how to use their bodies, um, and uh, you got to make sure guys are are uh, are uh, educated. You know, I mean, you got to have a smart O line. If they don't know what they're doing, um, not beyond the play, if they're just out there running the play and don't understand how that play works, how their body positioning works, they're going to be in uh, in some hot water. Uh, Coach, have you had any issues with backside tackle being too far away from three tech and making the block? Absolutely. So sometime that backside tackle, he would take a poor first step. Because, see, the thing to remember when you're teaching this is guys have to cover, they have to gain ground in whatever direction they're going, whether they're going vertical, going lateral, you have to gain ground with your first step. So a lot of times you have a tackle who's a little lazy footed. So he takes a poor first step. He ends up being late, and now the three tech is running down, making a play. Um, that would be an opportunity to maybe you teach that guy to kind of J-step, but I teach my guys because I want to get them into a natural movement as soon as possible, natural movement as in running, because everybody at one point in their life is going to run, all right? But not everybody is going to take a J-step. Not everybody is going to get into a three-point stance or pull or whatever. So I want them to get engaged and down the line as soon as possible. So given their alignment, they have to make sure that their first step is gaining ground and that their subsequent steps are powerful, fast steps. So they can at least occupy, slow that guy down, whatever the case may be. Um, what drills do you do use during practice? Um, pretty much the same drills <laughs> that every online coach does, except it's all spaced out. Um, I might have a drill where I, uh, uh, the one drill I do do is a leverage drill, all right? So I, I line up the D tackle with a slight shade on the offensive lineman. And I wish I had some tape to show you guys. But, um, and his job is to not let that D tackle cross his face. All right, because as you guys will see in a minute with the, uh, the power lock series that we have, you got to keep your D tackles where they are. They can't cross your face. You got to make sure they stay in that B gap, in that A gap, wherever they are. Um, but it's basically you're just you're stepping forward, and your your hand placement is you're you're forcing your play side hand or your gap gap side hand rather vertical into that guy's chest. So you have kind of a a, a what am I trying to say? You have a, a a a contradiction of power within yourself. Your your right side is pulling. Your right hand is pulling. Your left side is pushing. All right, so you're trying to get that guy to turn so he stays out of the gap. Are you doing this on goal line as well? Yes. Now, I'm gonna add that with a with a with a. Unfortunately, yes, we do it at the goal line because I'm just too deep into my O line roots. There comes a time <laughs> where you gotta have a tight end, have a fullback, or maybe I just love it, you know, because we're successful with it on the goal line. But I love getting tight putting tight ends and fullbacks in the game and uh, just going to get your money. I uh, definitely prefer that over let's stay four feet apart and uh, run this misdirection, or I really hate it when my coach calls the RPO at the goal line. That is, that is outrageous. <laughs> in my humble opinion, that is outrageous. Um, here we go. So I'll show you guys a couple more Ozzas. You guys see here, left tackle does a good job taking his step and moving his feet. All right, we can't we can't stop at the edge. We gotta we gotta move the edge. Receivers do a good job of blocking out here. Always nice to see receivers blocking. You no, know, and then you got a running back who can make a guy miss, stiff arm a couple guys. Here's an end zone view.
this was an excellent, excellent bang by the running back right here. So again, like I said before, if you're a defensive coordinator, you got to make sure that the six guys you put up here are going to be effective. Now, granted, maybe, I mean, it's third and long, so maybe these guys don't, uh, maybe they were expecting to pass, which, you know, third and long, 80% of the time, it's probably going to be a pass. So I'm sure this was a this was a blitz to try to get to the quarterback, and they just got burned on it. So uh, I'll give them their their credit. Actually, no, it didn't even blitz. They bailed out of it. But this is a great job of the O-line recognizing who the five most dangerous guys are. Um, so we find the five play side guys. Let me see if I can catch it. So everybody's stepping into their gap. Everybody's the, the left tackle should have stayed right here because the center caught this as one. So it would have been two and three. And we would have just had a, a, a negative one in terms of our numbers on the uh, on the play side and running back would have had to make something happen. So we don't even block the play side DN. He just kind of takes himself out to play number 90 right here. All right. Excellent job. Excellent job. I don't like the second level double right here with the right tackle coming all the way across. He should have went found work somewhere else. That's one thing I teach. Unless we're running like a counter or something, there's no need to, to double team on a second level. That's just some, some type of laziness inside of you. <laughs> That's doing that. All right. Um, any questions on Oz before I proceed? Any more questions? Next play we're going to go over is power lock. All right, we'll go on to the next thing. So I'll just go straight to the playbook, minimize the time. Maybe. <laughs> All right. So we call this power lock. I be, Actually, I had wait. A, somebody wanted to see a, a four four. Let me see the four four. I had a question. Uh, do you switch it up? Uh, wide splits. And Coach Leib, split? I can't hear you. I'm a. Uh, my speakers are down because of the delay. So if you want to type in. Your question to the uh oh here we go do you mix it up as far as wide and regular splits no so i know uh corona centennial is probably the most famous wide split team arguably um they have what's called smart splits so they're adjusting their guys depending on what play they have called and things like that but our splits are constant throughout the uh the entire game so we don't we don't adjust. Uh, let me draw up. I'll coach. I'll draw that up for you, so I can just keep it rolling. I'll draw it up and I'll send it to you. Let me uh, let me write down your name, and if you want to just post your email or something in the uh, in the chat box, and I'll draw up zone against a four four for you. Cause I don't want to take up too much time. I know it's Friday, and people might be on their lunch break, doing whatever we got to do. Um, so, so we got power lock here versus four two five. So our tackles are staying locked on the DNs. Our left guard, depending on this D tackle's leverage, he's either going to kick him into the B gap. This is that leverage drill I was talking about a minute ago. Or if he was in the A gap, he would just wash him down into the A, and then our pull would go around into the B gap. Center has the back block. Even if this was a three tech, center still has the back block. Um, and we're reading this linebacker. All right. So sometimes we got a slant popping behind them, whatever kind of alignment they're in. Um, it may not be so effective against a man defense. Um, but guys that want to sit back and play their, their cover three or or whatever, um, we try to play with their emotions a little bit because you see a pulling guard. If this is this linebacker's key, he sees a pulling guard, odds are he's gonna try to come up and make a play. 
Um, so let's go back to the, uh, so you got some cutups. This is a skip pull, by the way. This is a skip pull by the, uh, by the right guard. Should have had these in two separate windows. I will put a minimize some time. Got it, Coach Benny. Thank you very much. I'll get that to you. All right, so should be going lock left right here. So you got to see how everybody's coming down. Left tackle actually buries this guy, so we have to adjust. But I want you guys to notice the the left tackle steps, all right? He pounds his foot inside because he's trying to get his leverage. He's trying to get inside leverage on the DN. All right, he ends up walking into a pancake, which is always acceptable, all right? And then we're able to just adjust, make a guy miss or outrun him. <laughs> you guys see the center has the back block on the three tech. So he's basically J stepping out of his stance to get to the three tech. Because you see, you put that three tech in space. He doesn't know if he's not getting blocked for a trap, if it's a screen. So I rarely see like a three tech just screaming into the backfield because they don't want to be wrong. They feel like, oh, I'm, I'm unblocked for a reason. So you got to see the right tackle taking his inside steps to get his leverage. It's all about leverage. You take the angle away and everything else will, will come into come into play. What I don't like what the right tackle does is he just reaches out and grabs and that's that's a holding flag. All right. Big old white glove outside the shoulders. But it's only a flag if they call it, right? <laughs> all right. So let's go on to the next one. Oh, here's the end zone. So these guys are playing man. So the quarterback decided just to give it. I don't see how this popped really because we have an unblocked linebacker in the mix. Number uh, 25. But that's just some of the things with wide splits you see guys like somebody might be unblocked. Somebody might be in the perfect position, but because of our splits, they're completely displaced on the other side of the ball. So we still get a chance to, to get it done. Because uh, in the perfect world, um, this will be his read. That's the quarterback's read. All right. But he's basically head up over the center. So what the quarterback could have done, he could have thrown it. Because this is, this is where if he if 25 comes in, that's who we throw it to. So he could have thrown it. But sometimes uh, mistakes work out, I guess. <laughs> because uh, we still get yards. Tackles do a good job of getting their leverage. Everything works out because of the splits. End zone view. All right, so you guys see the linebacker. This is the read. He's already out of position because they're, they're in trips over here. So he's already out of position. If I was a quarterback, I probably would have thrown this. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> but I can only get mad so much. I can only get mad so much. All right. Everybody's at the line of scrimmage. Still gave it. All right. So this is considered like a short game in my book. 
So we only get what, like seven, eight, six. So the guard doesn't doesn't skip pull. He should be skipping through this. But the read linebacker is blitzing, and they're playing cover one. So I mean, if I'm if I'm the DC of this team, there's no reason why this play shouldn't have got blown up. All right, absolutely no reason why. But you see the center. I hope there's an end zone to this. The center's block bumps off the blitzer, and that's the answer we need to put our foot in the ground and get upfield. This guy should have definitely made the play. And sometimes, man, fate, <laughs> fate or luck, whatever you want to call it. But there's absolutely no reason. This is against uh, Long Beach Poly. I mean, this, there's absolutely no reason. One O-line tip I do tell my guys, you got to have fast feet. Like 56, he's a massive dude, but he's got to move his feet quicker than that. And he shouldn't let his guy leave. You know, my rule is once you engage with your guy, that's your guy. You You bury him until the play is over. Let me uh, check the chat box real quick. All right, let's keep it rolling. So when I first started coaching, my coach was like, you know, sometimes the wider, the better. And that's only that only works so much, <laughs> you know, because I still want to give the running back a, a relatively viewable surface to see on his run on his uh, on his track. I don't want him looking too wide to see where guys are and how their blocks are developing. So you guys see how the space works. Like this kind of blocking, if these guys had tighter splits, it probably would have been just a, a mass of crap right in the middle and a running back would have had to make something out of nothing. But because of the space, the, 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 the hole is already there. This is a good example. See the quarterback's read, he bells back, auto give. Read right here, bells back. That's how you get your numbers. Just read a guy. Because if this was just a straight, if we were just giving this straight as a handoff, we probably would have to pull the tackle to block this guy and turn him into the read. All right, but if you want to block everybody at the line of scrimmage, you got to decide who you're going to read at the second level. So all because of the space. We don't even run this to where it's supposed to go. But let me see, maybe the the D, the right guard doesn't pull through the right hole because we should be going through the B gap. Any questions on this before I uh, I move on? Let me go check out the chat box. Any questions? All right. 
So let's keep the train rolling. Oh, wait, here we go. Again, coach, it's the uh, it's the same splits for the whole game. So whether we're goal line, whether we're going into the goal line, backed up on the goal line, same splits, the exact same splits. All right, so I know a lot of guys uh, reached out wanting to see how we would block it. Um, block counter all right because i know that's the that's the only play where it's like wide splits you pretty much nullify your counter ability because you can't get any doubles or anything like that but uh it's different <laughs> all right so this is counter left we're doubling pardon the lines he's not going straight to the linebacker so we're we're doubling the three tech right here and they're moving that across the line of scrimmage to the backside linebacker. Center has the back block. Right guard is pulling the kick out to the end. Right tackles pulling through up to the linebacker. All right, just like everybody's drawing up counter. All right. Now, on this block right here, because remember I said double teams are not very conventional. So left guard, he's, he's the, the, the gas pedal, if you will. Oh, this block. This is a straight, just drive upfield, get it vertical. The lateral displacement happens with the left tackle coming across because he's uncovered. He's going into a, a uncovered gap, basically. He can get velocity to bang this and bump it over. All right. Yeah, I'll send the video, Coach T. White. I, uh, I'm live streaming on YouTube. It should be automatically uploaded to uh, to my channel when this is done. Uh, so we're doubling, bam, going to the backside backer, counter steps, reading the DN. Simple stuff. Let me go to show you counter right. So when we're going counter to the one tech, all right, the right tackle. He's stepping flat to make sure this guy doesn't decide to spin or do anything, anything uh, fancy. All right. So we're coming flat just to make sure nothing happens. But this is primarily the right guards block. So the center is a uh, center has the back block. Left tackle has to pull a little deeper just to make sure that he clears his three tech. All right. And then accelerate up to the linebacker. We got some some cut ups. Yeah, I'll send you a drawing of the uh, counter plays against a 4-3. We rarely see it against a 4-3 simply because that means they're playing cover zero. <laughs> so uh, I'll draw it up, though. But somebody's getting unblocked. But I'll draw it up. They don't have to be in the cover zero. They could be. Just playing tight and getting back into their zone, I guess. Just haven't seen it a lot. All right, so this is counter. So let's look at this double. So this guy's kind of head up. So the guard should be taking that. But you guys see what happens. The play side linebacker decides to to come in early, all right? When the double team, when that happens, the guard is alerted, like automatically, oh, they're stacked, so even better. So the guard is alert saying, hey, 
he's going to tell the tackle, I might have to leave this, this D tackle. So you be ready and be in position. All right. Cause I got a, I got an imminent threat coming through a gap that's not getting accounted for because the center is leaving to this back block. And honestly, they brought both of them. So the center had to abort this because 24 is a bigger threat to the play. And we still get everybody lined up. So think of it like, uh, I tell my guys to think of it like train tracks. So you're all on a train track. Whoever shows up on your track, just block that guy. Because you, there's no way you could be wrong. All right, so the center has his track. Actually, looks like he went straight there because he probably recognized it. But everybody's on their track. So step on your track and block whoever shows. Because we had two unblocked defenders to the back side of the play. And because of our splits, we're able to make something happen. Powder splits, if you have two guys unblocked that close to the line of scrimmage, it's all over. <laughs> Guaranteed. Go to the end zone. So this one was interesting because 28 is just out here floating. You know, maybe they had some kind of gap exchange called, which is why the DN flew way in. All right. But there's no way that should have been there, in my humble opinion. I don't think this gap should have been there. But that's what happens. All right. So take our counter step. Bam. So you see this hits pretty much in the A gap. All right, if we get displacement, so you guys see this, right guard is getting 41, right tackle is going to come and move it across the formation. That's what I mean by displacement. We get there, right tackle comes and moves it across. There's your hole. Check out the chat. Uh, coach, I'm going to go over pass blocking right after uh, I finish with this. All right. So... Again, you want to put 99 defenders at the line of scrimmage. That's fine. <laughs> so we have, let me see if there's an end zone to this so I can show you guys. All right, perfect. So they decide to blitz heavy, and you're going to stick with your counter. So what we need to do is what's called a 3D, three down blocks. All right. So in reality, everybody stopped stepping down. There is no double team. Everybody's stepping to their uh, to the backside gap. So they're going counter right. So right tackle is stepping down left. 77 is down left. Center's down left. And we're blocking whoever's there. So 54 takes his step. He ends up on a linebacker. This guy gets lost in space. 77 is down. Center's down. Pulls are still coming. Get a kick out. Pulling tackle has absolutely nobody to block. So you see, it's kind of a double-edged sword. 66 was completely unblocked. He should have made that play. You know, I'm sure in a in a better uh, if he was a better D tackle, he probably would have made the play. But the right tackle did an excellent job. I mean, he took this guy all the way across. Let me go back to the end zone. 54, 54 made this play. 
I can't ask for anything more <laughs> from my right tackle on a down block. Absolutely nothing more. So again, just harking back, given the splits, you can have unblocked guys right in the meat of your play, but because we have the space available, your running back can make something happen. So they get something out of nothing, but 56, if he's on his right track, he should be blocking this guy because he's kind of inside leverage. He shouldn't have stepped over this. And he should have at least try to block somebody better. <laughs> Question. I will. Yeah, I'll probably just email blast everybody, all like 200 something coaches, and uh, I'll send the YouTube link. So sometimes like you get first year guys who haven't really played in this system before. And they kind of, after they pass the first level, they get kind of lost because they don't understand how the play is supposed to line up. You know, I tell my guys, well, if you clear the first level and nobody's nobody's there, just keep running. All right, because you can't be wrong if you keep running and pick up somebody downfield. We'll watch this last one, then I'll go into, into pass blocking. So this is a good example of a 3D. Let me see if there's an end zone to this. So when the interior line is covered, then it's a 3D call, three down blocks. So the right, you see the left guard, he has an imminent threat in his gap. So he has to go. He has to abort the double and go straight to 10. Left tackle, he's coming straight to 60, whatever number this is. Center has to back block on number nine. And you pull around. Tackle doesn't have anybody really well. He does right there. Somebody from the outside can't really see him. Right guard doesn't even kick his guy out. He just he just runs. <laughs> Question. So against a 3-4, we will have what's called an out call. I'll, uh, I'll draw that up for you. But basically, let me go back to the uh, playbook view. So basically, the, the play side tackle, he wouldn't block the DN. He would go he, his his out call takes him out to the bandit that's walked down so that way the kick out is still on the on the uh on the dn let me just draw this up real quick so If we're running against a 3-4, ignore all of these. Uh, let me see if I can delete these. Yeah, let me just get these out of the way. So say we're going we're going counter uh counter right. And this guy's walked down right here. So what will happen? The right tackle is gonna say out, out, out. 
that tells communicates to the uh, to the guard that hey, I'm going out to this walk down linebacker. All right, we still got our double. will be on the nose now. Going there, pulling the kick out, and his pull is going up to there. That's how it will look against a three four. If both of them are walked down in a heavy blitz situation, we just got to do what we got to do. All right. If this guy's walked down, because we still got a pull, we're not going to abort any pull. All right. If this guy's walked down, then that just tells the center that he's going to flatter at the beginning. If everybody's walked down, as you guys have seen in some of the clips, you know, maybe you'll get lucky and pop something right up the middle. All right. But it's all about having the O line attack their leverage and run their feet and drive guys across the formation. All right, I hope that uh, answers your question. Now, real quick, before I go to uh, pass pro, I wanna show you guys some raw first year film because uh, some of you guys may be thinking of putting it in or I know it's June already, but some of us haven't even started practice yet. Thankfully, my guys, we got the green light to start um, last Monday. So we've been, we got in a week of practice already. But um, yeah, so this is, this is just raw first year, what it might look like. This is our second game of the season. So Huntington Park, that's a team in orange. They were running some kind of funky 3-4. It was very undisciplined. So I had a hard time game planning for these guys because I could tell by their alignment, they didn't know what they were doing or their coach didn't know what he was doing. Things were just kind of kind of off. So I mean, I hate to say that. You know, I love, I love all the coaches out there, but <laughs> so right here, you see the running back, he goes completely the wrong way. All right, I get a good block. We get a good kick out. But the running back decides to go against the grain of the play. All right. He should be right behind 56 running right here. But instead, he bangs it back to where everybody is. All right. That's, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> Clearly. That's beautiful right there, though. That's my dog. All right. Oh. Uh, Going on to the next one. So this is a better job. You guys see we're way too high trying to block this nose. That nose is a, is a uh, he was like 6'4", 290. He was a beast. So last year, I'll just share you guys with my first year. It was, we got hired, my head coach got hired in April and we started practice like the end of April. So relatively late in terms of starting the spring, uh, spring practice, but a lot of, so a lot of our practice time was just install, install, install all the little things that help make these plays become better. We kind of had to skip over them. Um, just so everybody kind of understood the play and looking back, that might not have been the best thing to do, but, um, we went this year, we went, uh, we went seven and four, lost in the first round of the playoffs. Um, but it's a whole lot of little stuff that these, the O line needs to know, like adjustments, guys walking up, bandits walking up. What do you, what you need to do? All right. But this is a that was a running, but this is game two. So that was the running back that got hurt, sprained his uh severely sprained his ankle. Didn't get him back to the end of the year. So this is uh these were my backups toward the end of the game. We won this game like 59 and nothing. 74. It's a big sloppy dude. Senior. Never played football. You know, so even when you got inexperience up there, you still got holes available. All right. 
any uh any questions on counter uh last year we were two point for every single play all right this year my interior line not my center but my guards are going to be in three point stances the reason being i need them to have a little bit of an automatic leverage in terms of blowing guys up it's not easy to come out of a two-point stance if you haven't really been coached on how to how to harness your power out of a two-point stance and given the circumstances of COVID and everything i need them in three points because we're 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 spread wide split kind of situation but we're not throwing the ball 80 times like at the beginning of my slides as some of you guys saw we threw the ball 300 something times and ran it 270. So it's still tipping toward the pass game, but at the same time, we're relatively balanced of an attack. Um, that being said, I need them in three-point stances because I need them to have that leverage that comes with coming out of a three-point stance. Two-point stance, you can get easily lazy in that. Chest can be all high. Everything can be wrong. Just standing up straight out of your stance, and that's not what I'm looking for. So I definitely want them to be in uh, three-point stances moving forward. When I was at the JUCO level, everybody was in a two-point stance, and we just kept it that way um, because it's higher expectations, and we had a full off-season to practice. But um, definitely, because I'm a I'm a run game guy. Like I, <laughs> all the pretty stuff, that's cool, but I like uh I like my pancakes and and my syrup. All right. So uh, if there's no more questions on um cat i'll move on to pass blocking so when there's an even front let me see where my slide goes when there's an even front we have slide like this all right so the left side will be bobbed up depending on where we're going. It doesn't, it's not always the left side, but in this situation, left side is bobbed up, right side is gap responsible. I try to help out my center and I try to help out the O-line in the sense that I want my bob side to have the, have the automatic leverage, all right? If this was flipped and my right guard was bobbed, this is a hell of a block, all right? Because my center is vacating to his A-gap and now I'm pulling the lineman over to Bob on this this type one, the shade. And that that block always has some issues. It gets made, but you end up having to turn it into like a down block, basically. And if you're not balancing what you're trying to do, you can miss and, and fall to pieces. All right. Um, this is the only protection that we run or the only protection that I'm going to admit to running <laughs> simply because I don't know who's watching this. And uh, I want to keep my competitive edge kind of sort of. So uh, this is one of the base protections that we run. Running back has inside out priority on his protection. Um, now, if it's a if it's an odd front, we have a four man slide. So this is against a three three five. Now we just pull the uh, the play side guard. So this is the same theory in terms of uh, how zone and Oz, we have to gap. This is basically gapping and pass protection. All right, because we don't know where the nose is gonna go. We don't know where the end is gonna go. So until they declare where they are, we have to pull four guys to accommodate the gaps. All right, um, this is pretty successful. Uh, like say this linebacker, if he wants to walk up, then the guy automatically knows, hey, that's my guy, center, you're by yourself. You know, sometimes they walk up and they twist out of that alignment. You guys just got to be ready to pick that up. You know, you got to be ready to pick that up. You see a whole lot of games. You know, I'm expecting to see more 3-3 three, three stacks this year. Uh, last year was really more about uh, even fronts. But um, the way, just quick quick tidbit so you guys all understand, the way defenses are going to try to beat you, and I'm, I'm sure this is true about every offense, they're going to try to make you wrong up front. All right, because they may not be able to cover you all. You might have a bunch of athletes out there, a bunch of solid receivers. They're going to try to make you wrong up front. They're going to try to trick your O-line. So 
they're going to be a lot of, uh, in terms of even fronts, a lot of double A-gap situations where they got both D tackles on the A-gaps, both anchored off the center, and, they're, and then they're going to twist, you know. They're going to be linebackers walked up. They're going to be DNs, eagle down, and a bunch of a bunch of funky fronts. So if you're thinking of switching to this kind of offense, be ready for all the funky fronts that you could don't even think exist. They're going to exist all of a sudden, um, simply because they're trying to make you wrong. They're trying to they're trying to see what you do first of all, but they're trying to make you wrong in your quest to figure out what they're doing. All right. So let me uh, go back. So I'm going to show you guys some of our uh, film. Since I think majority of the guys watching this might be uh, high school coaches, to show you guys how Pass Pro works out. So here we go, even front. Kind of fell to pieces here. So our right side is bobbed up again. So like I was saying, how offensive linemen without the right kind of skill get exposed. So this guy right here, number 54, my right tackle, he uh he's a strong guy, but he was just wrong fundamentally on any given play <laughs> so on one play he's getting beat on the next play he's burying somebody 10 yards downfield and uh because i didn't have the drop off after him was pretty severe so i had to play that kind of guy and i'm sure a lot of you guys might be in that same kind of situation where you don't have five studs or four studs across the board and you're trying to you got to make do with what you got so uh thankfully he was he had his moments good moments you know, and uh, quarterback does things like that. That's always nice. So here you see the end zone. So you guys see, this is one of those times where the Bob side, my right guard, he's bobbed up on somebody who already has inside leverage. So we have to post and get our leverage right off the snap and stay in control of that. You know, his problem is his ass is too far behind him right there and in a perfect world this guy might make a sack what i would want him to do is i want him to engage this like right here start driving this guy just drive him across the formation throw your hips into him and drive this guy across the formation but by bending down you throw your center of gravity behind you all right or when your ass is out, I should say, your center of gravity is not in, in an advantageous location. So this guy gets to get by you. All right. Let's see, that's a screen. Here we go. Let me delete these. You guys have any coaches on staff that don't like to delete their comments or delete their uh, <laughs> huddle marks? Tell them to start thinking about the next guy. <laughs> Always think about the next guy. All right. Oh, there's more. Here we go. So even front. Left side is bobbed up. Decent pocket. Left tackle almost loses leverage. Almost throw an interception. 
All right. But this is a decent job. All right. I mean, we, we can't give the quarterback any more time. You know, unfortunately, he almost threw a pick. But he has he has time to look at everything he has to look at. All right. Feel free to ask questions if you guys have any questions. I'll go to a uh, a game with the off front team after this. So again, solid protection. You guys see the running back is leaking out this time. So when your running back leaks out, the quarterback has to know that, hey, you only got five guys. So if there's a blitz front side, that's all on you. If you don't want to dump it off to the wide open receiver and wait for something else downfield, that's all on you. All right, we make our quarterback responsible for uh, for potential potential blitzers because of our uh, our alignment. Question. Uh, the running back calls the protection. So the running back gets up, he'll make the call. He can either be on the call side where the bob is happening, or he can decide to go cross face because we don't want to just give it an automatic, uh, have an automatic um, tail to the defense. So he can line up on the left and the bob can be happening on the right side, or he can line up on the right side where the bob is happening. All right. This kind of all depends. Or we might tell him what to do in our game plan because maybe they maybe they're an overfront team and we want to get them in some kind of get some kind of number advantage with them. So it just kind of all depends on what we want to do. Gotta catch the ball. Uh let me go to I'll show you guys the end zone, then I'll go to a uh out front. So this game was against our rival down the high school. We ended up winning this game on a last second walk off Hail Mary. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was a beautiful sight. And we ended up getting close enough to throw it to the end zone because their their coaches got a sideline warning when they made the field goal on their previous drive. So sucks for them. <laughs> got happy about that two point lead, man. Got to stay grounded. Got to stay within yourself as a coach, especially. All right. So Downey is playing a three, four against us. Uh, I think this is a fast screen, so it's not going to, be pass protection. Let me see. Here we go. This is actually a stack look right here. So you guys see how my right guard was just completely not even ready to pick up this this nose tackle. All right, again, this is first year, first year woes. You know, he's a senior. First drive against your rival is a lot. It's a lot on his mind right there. You know, but we don't want the quarterback getting smacked. And also my center, you guys see how the center turns his shoulders like that. I don't really want that. He needs to step back into his gap and let the guy declare. He should have been going to the left because uh, our Bob is the right tackle right now. So the center should have been going into this left A gap.
the little things. Just do your job. This is the screen right here. It was a terrible game for us and up until like 10 minutes left in the game. We were we were down by like 20 with uh at the end of the third quarter. So right here, looks like everybody does their job. Three three stack again. For some reason, this isn't intentional. What my right guard is doing, how he's bailing back, that's not intentional. That is not coached. <laughs> All right. Um, earlier in the season, we faced a team that liked to play a whole lot of games up front. So given our, our skill set, I said, you know what? We're going to vertical set this game and let all of that happen in front of us. And then throughout the rest of the season, I left it up to them. I said, hey, if you feel like it's going to be a game coming, feel free to vertical set. Just make sure you communicate it with your guys. I don't need one guy vertical setting when everybody else is kickstepping. So, as you see, he does his own thing right here <laughs> when there's no imminent threat of a twist or anything. So, this is, uh, this is our rollout protection right here. Looks like we got a blitz between left tackle, left guard. So, left tackle is wrong right here because we're just collapsing down on the play side gaps. So in our rollout protection, everybody's just flowing play side to cover up all the gaps and let the end man on the line of scrimmage or whoever's the last guy, let them chase. But what my left tackle does, he just does a little hinge step and ends up letting the guy in between him. All right. Oh, this is a this is lock right here. All right. So remember when I said how coaches call RPOs <laughs> at the line of scrimmage at the at the goal line? This is one of those situations. So my head coach, sometimes, you know, he just gives the call from above. You know, and you gotta do what your head coach wants to do. Simple as that. And you end up in situations like this sometime, not all the time. He's a good dude. <laughs> but uh so this is locked we're pulling the guard coming around here but you see how many people are at the line of scrimmage and they have all these wide blitzers all right so we got a disguised blitz let me see if i can pause it we got a disguised blitz coming off the slot receiver this guy's coming in all right my tackle's worried about him so we got an unblocked guy i think this guy comes too so everything's just kind of kind of funky because remember, when you're at the goal line, defenses can play more games because you don't have a whole lot of space. You know, they might not be able to play a man coverage when you're on the 50, but maybe when you're on the three, they can play that man coverage. Just jump past. Got to do what you got to do, man. <laughs> we needed that touchdown. Got to do what you got to do. I'll show you guys a couple more. That was a botched, uh, botched snap right there. Snapping on the wrong count. So you see, they got blitzes coming, or they're showing blitz. And you guys remember how I said my right tackle, one minute he's blocking somebody 10 yards downfield, the next minute he's get his butt kicked. So 54 is right here. This DN just goes right inside, bam. All right, in a different situation. Quarterback's getting blown up. Then on the other side, my center goes to the wrong A-gap. Mind you, this is the last game of the season. All right, so this is, we've been through it. We've seen fronts. So this is all mental. So the same way 
that defenders get lost in space sometimes. Sometimes your O-line, they could just be overthinking stuff just way too much, even though they have a simple, simple game plan in front of them. Because offensive line-wise, we don't have a whole lot of new concepts or a whole lot of um, uh, different concepts. Like, we block the same. Like, receivers have to learn all the, all the passes. Our, we got we either a three-man fan or four-man fan. All right, run game is our six, seven plays, and you got to know all of those adjustments. But other than that, everything is consistent. All right. Anybody have any questions on pass protection? Any questions? Feel free to throw them in the chat. No, that's not a full slide. So with the empty formation, unless we're uh, we're rolling, sometimes we would go quads and roll to the quads. All right, that's when everybody's um, um, doing our rollout protection. So it will look like a full slide. But um, no, when we're empty, we're uh, we're just bobbed up. Or depending on the front, if it's a three man front, then we got our uh, our four man fan. If it's an even front, then we, it's our basic protection. Only thing that the quarterback has to recognize is that there's no sixth man in protection because we're empty. So he has to know that, hey, any blitz coming from the Bob side, that's on you. That's uh, that's the only difference. And we do that because we want to keep it simple for the offensive line. You know, we don't want to really have too many adjustments to the Bob side. We're guaranteeing that we block the fat guys. That's what our pass protection does for the Bob side, you know, big on big, block the fat guys. And uh, anything other than that, we leave it up to the running backs and uh, quarterback to, to pick up or recognize or whatever. Any more questions? We're just about wrapping up, so. Let me know, or you guys know where to find me. So let me share my screen with you guys real quick. So if there are no more questions, if you guys want to reach out, this is how you guys can find me. All right. I, uh, I coach and, and train offensive linemen. Um, you guys might have seen this floating around um, Instagram or something like that. But uh, I've been training offensive linemen since 20, 2011, officially as a as a business since 2016. And uh, I also hold annual coaches clinics. Sometimes I go visit coaches and train their staff right there on campus. But uh, I have I try to have an annual coaches clinic every single year. First one was in 2019, had to cancel this one um, for 2020 just because of the whole COVID situation. Um, but yeah, if any of you guys in the LA area or just want to talk, that's where you find me. Warren High School, and if any of you are college coaches, we've got a whole lot of uh, recruits on our stat, on our uh, roster this year from the skills all the way to the linemen. So whatever you guys need, feel free to come on down. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys stopping by, staying for this hour and hour and thirty minutes. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, feel free to fire them out. Otherwise, we're all good to go. No, nothing under center. All right, really, don't do anything under center. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.